In this video, we're going to look at making an artist copy using a paper, pen and paper drawing, um, which we'll then scan in and digitize. So start by making a pencil sketch outline of the image you're copying, just as a guideline. Once you've got your pencil sketch down, start working on top of that with the pen and try and make all the shapes closed shapes. So that means you have not got any gaps in the shapes. So as if it, if it was a square, each corner would be joined up. There'd be no gaps if you were to fill that shape with a color. And once you've finished the drawing, just check that all the shapes are closed and your lines are all as tidy as they can be. And then scan the image in and open it in Photoshop. Um, duplicate the first layer, so you've got two, you've got an original copy and then you've got a second copy of the drawing itself. And then to make it as black and white as possible, go to image adjustment levels and just tweak the black and the white sliders so that you've got no grey tones in the image. Then once you've adjusted the levels go to select colour range and click on the white background press OK and then you should see the marching ants and what it has is the white background selected and then if you press delete that will remove the white background. So now you've just got your black line image with a clip. So what you can do once you've got your line image as a layer, start building up layers underneath that layer for the colour. So um, under the line image now I've got a layer called red, uh, fish red because I'm doing the fish. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just using the paintbrush tool and I'm colouring in the shapes underneath the line image. So the line layer stays at the top and then any painting goes underneath. Um, I've got my artist copy open on the page as well for colours, so just I drop the colours from that. Um, as you can see, I've started building up all the different layers for each colour. So if you look at the layers panel that I've got, there's white, uh, purple, so each colour's got its own independent layer. So if you need to change those colours, it's much simpler than having all the colours in one layer, so keep them all separate. You can change the brush sizes, the opacity, um, so have a play around depending on how you're responding to your artist using this method. Um, for the shading, what I've done, if you finish all the colouring for each section and then go back, use the magic wand tool to select that colour. So if I'm choosing white, I go on the white layer, I click with the magic wand tool on that, then I make a new layer, call it white shade, and then get my brush tool, change the opacity to around 50%, make it black, so it's going to be 50% opacity black, and then you can start using the shading, but it will be within the selection of the white area. So because you selected the white colour on the white layer, that selection stays in your new layer, so you won't go outside the shape. 